Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. Wow. You ever had one of those days where you felt like everything you're doing just in slow motion? Having a hard time getting it going, getting it started. You look up as two hours later. You've done a couple of things, but you've done this. Yeah, sort of one of those days. And uh, it's always interesting when that happens because usually there's a purpose to it somewhere along the way if we pay attention, perhaps even slowing down, right? Well, we're up to the 56th Psalm right now. And this Psalm has a long title, so let me just share it with you. It starts off with, to the chief musician, yes, the choir director, the, to the choir master. It is a mictum of David. It says that later, but I want you to know that first. A mictum of David. And we've seen several of these mictums. You look it up, and all the definitions say the same thing. Uh, we don't know what it is. Okay, an unknown something. And it says it's associated with the Psalms. Well, yeah. Some people say, they call it a technical term. <laughs> it, that sort of makes me chuckle because if we don't know what it is, how do we know that it's technical? And when you say it's technical, it nearly connotes the idea, and it definitely gives you this idea that it's unimportant. You know, it's just, in other words, you don't have to worry about this. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. But technical, when you don't know what it means, I, I just think that's sort of funny. Uh, Zodiati steps out a little further. He says it's a technical musical term whose meaning is uncertain. Okay, well, that's great. Well, how do you know it's a musical term? Well, maybe because of other information in the title, and I think that's likely what's going on because it says this. To the choir master, according to, now hang on to this. I'm going to read the New American Standard first. The Jonath Elim Rehokim. New American Standard has three separate Hebrew words. Jonath, Elim, Rehokim. The King James puts that all together in one word. The same thing I just read. Jonath, Elim, Rehokim. It's one word. How many letters is that? Uh, 15 or 16 letters. I'm only going to count them. The ESV um, translates it for us. And it can, means several things, but the ESV says this. According to the dove on far-off terebinths. Now, terebinths are like uh, tree kind of things, right? So a dove on a far-off terebinth. The lexem says, according to the silent dove of distant. And then the idea being lands, of distant lands. Well, I think it's probably a musical term because it's saying, hey, sing this to this tune. I believe that's what that means, to a particular tune. And so if it's a tune that's called the dove on far-off terebinths or the silent dove of distant lands, it's going to be a rather melancholy tune, I would think, right? Because of how doves sound, okay? But it's not finished yet. To the choir master, according to the dove on far-off terebinths, a victim of David when the Philistines seized him in Gath. So this is what David uh, was feeling. This is what he wrote either at that time or later on, or probably wrote at that time and what he was actually singing to the Lord God when the Philistines seized him. So that gives us even more insight into what kind of melody it would have been, a melancholy melody, a somber melody, okay? So with all that being said, here's verse 1 of what David says. Be gracious. To me, O oh God, for man tramples on me. All day long, an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. So that's the first two verses. So what's he asking for? He's calling upon the Lord to be gracious to him, to be merciful to him. Why? Because he's got enemies coming against him. And he's got enemies that are attacking him all day long and oppresses him all day long. He actually says it twice. All day long an attacker oppresses me. An enemy tramples on me all day long. For many attack me proudly. David was being attacked by those who were the enemy of Israel. Then David was being attacked by those who were of Israel. Uh, if he's here in uh, with the Philistines seizing him, that means he's still fleeing his father-in-law, Saul. And all that was going on with that. Remember, we, we went through David's life several months ago. And so he's calling upon the, Lord, upon the Lord to be gracious to him. 
And then this great, great verse, great verse, verse three, <laughs> Psalm 53, three, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. The Lexham says, when I fear, I trust you. New American Standard, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Then the King James, and I love the King James because we used to sing a song that's the, exactly the way the King James uh, voices it here. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Uh, just a great declaration that, you know what, that we're going to have times when we're going to be afraid. There's going to be times when fear comes upon us, when fear rises up within us, when fear comes against us. But when that happens, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. He makes this declaration, even though he's in a situation of what? The Philistines had seized him in Gath. Do you think he might have been afraid then? Oh, yeah, we've already seen Psalms where he's declared that he was because he, he uh, felt his life was in danger. But when I am afraid, what time I am afraid, I will trust in you. Verse 4, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Isn't that a great question? Now, we're going to see something here. We won't be able to see it today, but we'll see it at the end of this psalm, which is a short psalm. And right here, the ESV says, what can flesh do to me? And they do it as a question. The Lexham says it as a question. New American says it as a question. The King James doesn't state it as a question. It says this, in God, I will praise his word. In God, I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. It's a very declarative statement. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. Sometimes we just have to grab a hold of our minds and our thoughts and declare these things. I will not fear. I will not. Okay. And that's what he was doing here. But he's also making that declaration. It can be read as a question. What can flesh do to me? Okay. What can, what's the most that flesh can, what's the most that a man can do to somebody? Most of us would say, well, kill us. And we'd go, yeah, well, yeah, that's right. That's the most they can do. Well, not exactly. Uh, they can kill you. They can also kill your family and et cetera, et cetera. Things that really are worse than the personal death type of thing. But even in the midst of that, David's saying what? In God, the God in whose word I praise, I will trust. I'm going to trust him. I'm not going to trust what man can do to me. I'm definitely not going to trust the fear. Folks, this is a big, big thing today, okay, a big thing today. People function out of fear, okay? Even those who profess to be believers and, and may very well be believers are more motivated by fear than they are by faith. This psalm is a great psalm for this to help us with this because he says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. He's making these decisions. And it's good to make these decisions ahead of time to determine I'm going to trust in the Lord even when I fear. I'm going to trust in the Lord even when things aren't going the way I want them to go. I'm going to trust in the Lord. Yes, I'm going to call, call out upon the Lord. He's been captured. He's been seized. So, Lord, be gracious to me. But you know what? Even though the enemy tramples me, I am trusting you every day. I think this would be a good thing to keep in our minds right here. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Again, I'm Dale. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.